Welcome. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to remove Edgeville added objects that we no longer need, making a shop, setting up an NPC spawns location, and adding items to the shop with a specific trade currency for the items, which we had in a previous tutorial. Now, to get started, the first thing we want to do is open up our folder. We want to go to the data folder. We want to go to items. We're going to open unpack shops txt and delete the pack shops.s file the next thing we need to do is go map we need to open up the unpack spawn list.txt and delete the pack spawns folder same with npcs delete the pack spawns folder and open up unpack spawns npcs now now that we've got this open i'm going to bring it to my screen the first thing we need to do is go all the way down the bottom of the unpack shops type in number 34 the currency of 2997 with true. Now, true or false doesn't really make much difference. I think true means the NPC will not move, but false means they can walk around. Now, the next thing we're going to do is type in Tom's Fishing Supplies. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're going to make an item. So, for now, we'll just put this as 6222. And we'll put 10 and we'll save that do not get out of the folder just leave well file just leave that one open the next thing we want to do is under unpack spawns list we want to type in this exactly which is the npc id one triple five seven with the coordinates three two four three three one five two zero and that there will spawn it right next to our fishing node in mumbridge Next, we want to open up unpack spawns list.txt. And in this file, underneath edge, there will be three lines similar to this. Now, what we need to do is we need to delete those and make sure there's no spaces. So that way, this code will not error. Now, just to give you a rundown, the object is this. That's the type. That is the rotation, like what angle it's sitting at. Like 0, 3 means it might, oh, sorry, not 0, 3. Minus 3 means it's uh, turned around. Uh, left so left on a third spot so third snapped axes if that makes sense and the next part is obviously the coordination is x y and plane and um, does it have a boolean clip so can you walk through it or can you not walk through it so it's got a boolean clip which means it's true so you can't walk through it okay so the next thing is once those three are done just minimize that we need to open up the frosty's cache editor and we also need to load our cache so load the cache i'll just go through it quickly is we go into our server and we need to go da data or data and cache open that up the first thing we want to do is go to items now as i said before six triple two so what we want to do we want to scroll down and just find a random number near the bottom so we'll make this two triple nine six Okay, so we'll delete that. I like using the bottom ones because it's a lot easier to find out where you're going. Okay, so six triple, sorry, triple six two. So look for that. Uh, triple six two, I went past it, didn't I? Ready, so broken fishing rod. We want to duplicate that. We want to put it as two triple nine six and okay. So now it's broken fishing rod. We're going to not name it broken. We're going to name it destroyed. Okay, only for this tutorial, it doesn't really matter what you name it, but that's what I'm going to name it. The currency as a hundred. Okay, the team, it doesn't matter. Stackable doesn't matter. Stack IDs and amounts, that stuff is only if it's stackable. It's not going to be a stackable item, it's going to be an individual item. We could make it stackable if we want. One would mean it would be, and zero means it's not. Okay, stack amounts means how much it can stack up to before it breaks. So, like, you can set that to like 10. 15 and so forth and it'll break at that if not it will go up to 2.1 mil like the total max money amount okay so model this is your inventory id this is rotations offset and model stuff okay now to change a lot of this stuff is not very important what we need to do on here though is the first option on this we need to put the use option and save it okay Later on, I will be showing how to change colors of the model 
but that requires a different program and so forth for certain stuff. Pretty sure you can actually edit these ones here to do something about it, like client scripts, but I've never really done any of this because I use the proper programs for modeling. Okay, so now that we're done, we're gonna click out of that twice and we're gonna open up NPCs. Now for NPCs, we need to go all the way down to which number was it? It was one triple five seven. All right. So once we hit at one triple five seven, which I should be able to see in a sec, one triple five six, one triple five seven, we will need to delete this. Okay. So we delete that. We go all the way up to three hundred and eight. So once we hit three hundred and eight, we can duplicate this which is master fisher so duplicate him we want to go one triple five seven we want to name him tom's fishing supplies we want to change his combat level to 256 it doesn't matter what combat level or anything you use that's optional in your choice this pickpocket option double click to highlight it and erase and type in trade with a capital t now this is how you change the model colors for an actual model. So these things represent what part of the model changes color. Now I don't know much about the color codes uh, off by heart, but there is plenty of ways I can actually find out for you. Texture colors is the same thing, but I prefer, like I said, to use it in an actual uh, program where we can edit it 110%. It'd be a lot better and a lot easier. This way is just if you don't have those programs, it's a bit more um, effective on the spot. It's not a very good thing. It just makes the colors change a little bit. So it's not that great. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, I just want to minimize that because we never know if we're going to need it again. Now that all those files are deleted, we need to open up this, which is our Eclipse. Now that file that I was in is the file we need to use. So we need to go to com.feather.nets.decoders.handlers. Click on NPC handler. Scroll down till you hit line uh, 355 so this LSIF uh, crossbow shot we want to highlight that and the line underneath once we've highlighted both we need to press enter and obviously paste it change that to 34 and change this crossbow shop to say Tom's so this is only for us to know what it is okay so Tom's fishing supplies oh, Jesus and if you accidentally ever get that press insert it removes that because I've done that plenty of times in the past and accidentally type on something and what it does it erases everything in front so it takes over and just replaces everything and it's annoying it can actually stuff up a lot of code okay so one triple five seven was the NPC's ID for that control s to save make sure we saved all these text documents as well if I didn't say that before the next thing that we need to do because now that we've loaded all that up is we need to uh, let's have a look we actually have done this code which is the one to get into game and done it we've deleted all the folders we've done the text editing uh, we've done the NPC and we've done the item the one thing we need to do now is go back to the text documentation under unpacked and how we had the six triple two we need to change that to the item ID that we were using which was two triple nine six now that item there will appear and it will say destroyed, whatever. Okay, so now we want to get out. We want to launch it. So now it should be packing everything. Once it's fully done, you want to go to the loader. It will open up and then we need to sign in with our admin account or moderator or owner account. It depends on what you want to call it. Me, myself, I just call it whatever because it doesn't really... Um, have an actual meaning considering it's a solo project and it's a tutorial so but it's good to know those things so if we left click on him because he's got a talk to option he's not going to move around oh he has it actually moving around okay maybe it's certain npcs that move around i'm not too sure he shouldn't be now if we go to trade tom it'll come up with this and it says 100 currency so i can buy one because that's the amount of currency now i've got nothing in my money pouch now i'm not too sure if anything in my money pouch will actually make this a bit buggy so we're going to just grab a thousand gold and we're going to open up the shop and see if it actually works so let's buy one 
no it's only going to use this but if we add this to the tool belt is it going to cause the error if it does we need to figure out the code to change that and it does it's taking it from the money pouch which is not good so if you've got money in the money pouch it's going to interfere with this it's because this code here for this item is not recognized into here so this overrides everything because that's saying that this is that because it's checking the money pouch first before checking the inventory so what we need to do is we need to change it from checking the inventory first before the money pouch which we can do in a later tutorial anyways so that's done we've got these broken ones and destroyed ones broken ones was from earlier i want to go here and bank so just to show you that there's two different items also if you didn't know before i jumped into all this you can actually spawn the money currency that we made by typing in hold on a sec item and then it was two triple nine seven and we want say twenty thousand or something like that so that gave us like twenty thousand currency to spend in the store and then as we add things more and more further you can make whatever names you want certain items get them so they do things you know implement it a little bit to go okay maybe get a broken fishing rod we find an item while fishing we combine it together and it's going to make this you know so that's a little bit of that but then you can also implement into uh, getting an interface a uh, dialogue but for interfaces you need a lot of back knowledge to do back-end coding in the client to get the interfaces to work correctly for most of this tutorial it would be too hard to do that and I don't have the tools to do that unfortunately but what we could do is we could make a dialogue so if you have this item have that item and it's in the inventory you click it click it and it'll come up with a dialogue saying would you like to make this item and you can go yes or no we can even make it into like one of these sort of interfaces and we can go yes or no and when that happens it will make it or it won't make it if you try to make it and you don't have the items required or whatever it will say you don't have the items required you're missing such and such or if you do have it it will make it or if you want to not make it you cancel it it will say you know nothing down here and you'll still remain with the items but hopefully that has helped that is this tutorial complete if you could like subscribe and sub that would be absolutely excellent much appreciated see you in the next video